Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Nathan Drinkard. I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. We're on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everywhere in between. If you're looking for us in the video format, you can find us at the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. Drink, we are fully operational after three months of being semi-operational, you might say. And it is right. great, great to be with you on this wonderful Friday. Oh yeah, we back, baby. You know how I feel about the fruit for Fridays. You know, we we up in this thing. We ready. We in the lab. We ready to go. We full strength. That mean none of that. You know, <laughs> you know what it is. So uh, here we go, man. Uh, um, another day, another dollar. Giving the streets what they need. We see what they don't. Absolutely, say what they want. Set your dinner plates because it's time to eat. And last but not least, let's talk some sports, baby. Jay, what we got today? Well, we got a lot of NBA playoff action to get to. We'll preview all the all the first round series that we have, including uh, Celtics Nets in the East and Warriors Nuggets in the West. And we will also continue our NFL draft coverage. But we start, we have to start with the NBA playing tournament because it's not over yet. Uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, you had, well, on Tuesday, you had the seven seeds solidified with the Brooklyn Nets beating the Cleveland Cavaliers. 115, 108. And then in the nightcap, it was the Minnesota Timberwolves beating the Los Angeles Clippers, 109 to 104. And then on Wednesday night, the Atlanta Hawks blew the doors off the Charlotte Hornets, eliminating them from that <laughs> the 9 10 game, 132, 103. And that other game, oh, Pelican Spurs. Yeah, that's the one that I called the whatever game. And uh, the Spurs are gone. And the Pelicans advance to the eighth seed. So now you have tonight, in about an hour, you got the Hawks and Cavs for the eighth seed in the East and the Pelicans. And the Clippers will battle it out for the eighth seed in the West. Drink, uh, what did you make of the Tuesday, Wednesday action and your thoughts on the games tonight? Well, um, it, it seems that the play-in tournament is starting to shape up the way I thought it would. Um, if you remember when we was doing our uh, preview, I said I thought the Nets would get in at seven and uh, I had the Hawks uh, getting in at eight. It seemed like uh, even though we got the game tonight, it seems like uh, I, I could possibly get that one. I, I like I like my chances with that one just because um, I don't know. Uh, I, I just like I just feel like the Hawks going to get it done, even though the Cavs should be the better team, I guess you would say. But I'm going with the Hawks. I'm going with the team that had done it. And then in the West, we seen what happened. Um, Tim Woods with the celebration of the, of the season. Um, somebody might want to tell these guys. That uh, that was not the championship. But for the Timberwolves, I guess a uh, franchise that ain't seen much success since Kevin Garnett. Can you really be mad? And I hear I've been hearing a lot of chatter about uh, Patrick Beverly, how he been running his mouth. He did deliver on his promise when he signed. He said this team was gonna he was gonna take that team to the playoffs. They did make the playoffs. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? That's why he out here cracking the cold one at the post game, you know, uh, post game joint. So, with that said, uh, Tim Woods in now. So now we got the Clippers. We got the Clippers going against the Pelicans. Listen, I'm really not interested in the Pelicans making the playoffs. I'm, I mean, honestly, I'm not. I'm not overly excited about the Clippers, but at least they got Paul George. I'm not interested um, in the Pelicans. I, I get it, CJ McCullough, Brandon Ingram. I get it. 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 I'm just not. I just don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you're selling interviews with the Pelicans. So I'm still going with the Clippers. Um, getting in at eight. Um, now, something I wanted to talk about with. Uh, that, that blowout that you mentioned, and we were just talking about it. Hey, man, I don't know what Mar Bridges was thinking, but I'm going to tell you like this. And listen, I, we, we get on to the fans for certain things that they do. Yep. Um, that's, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Listen, if you're going to say the fans can do whatever they want as long as it don't cross the line on the court because they're not players, but I feel like players should never cross the line and go into the stands. And I feel like what Miles Bridges did is that's exactly what he did. Anytime a player goes and throws something in the stands, that's that player going into the stands essentially because you cross the line. Listen, I, I get it. Fans, for the most part, especially when they're not on the uh, court side seats, they're going to say a lot of things. And 
really they can say whatever they want. I mean, really. I mean, because you think about where they are and you think about where you are. I get it. Courtside, maybe they're a little closer. If they say something too crazy, you know, you can go get the referee. You, If you're LeBron James, you get them up out of there. But for the most part, listen, I don't understand how you make it to this level and then now, every, you know, sticks and stones might break my bones. The words will never hurt me. Then you get as a professional. Now everybody's so sensitive to like what's being said. Like, listen, that fan was probably telling you you was trash that night, and he ain't lying because you the Hornets was hot garbage. You got Lamelo Ball out here, you know, putting up an eighth in the backwood out here uh, before the game. For those of you that know what I mean, and mean, mean you know, if you know, you know, but. And then he come out there with that performance. I don't, I don't know, man. Jordan got to – he got to go tighten up with that coach. So, I don't know what was up with that, but I thought that was some tomfoolery. So, um, yeah. So, with that said, I think tonight my, my prediction will come true. And, two, the Hornets should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the I'll – get, I'll get to the Miles Bridges – in a moment because that was <laughs> it's funny the, this play-in tournament all the storylines for me are not really about the games because like I, I have nothing for instance I have nothing to say about that Pelican Spurs game <laughs> and I, nothing nothing because I didn't watch didn't plan on it whatever like who, whatever happened it happened so um the first thing I the first thing I have to say is this Paul George thing and that's another thing I was I hadn't, I hadn't looked, I hadn't read that story. I need to read it while I'm talking here at the same time. Uh, but Paul George being out tonight due to uh, a positive COVID test. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's a joke at this point in life. Uh, right. This is entering year three. It's, it's the beginning of year three uh, since this whole thing started. I don't care. I don't care if he's vaccinated, unvaccinated. I'm going to assume that he's vaccinated because I'm not seeing headlines that saying he's unvaccinated. So, um, so it's just like, it's what I've kind of been saying about the flu. Before coronavirus, if somebody had flu-like symptoms, if they felt good enough to play, they playing. So my question is, is Paul George sick? Because just because you tested positive for COVID does not mean you're sick. And th that is my immediate problem. I think it's I think it's it's just terrible news for the Clippers. Not that I have any um interest in them winning this game and going as an eighth seed, but I'm just saying, if you're a Clippers fan, if you're Clippers ownership, if you're you know in that type of uh you know, that arena, I would be livid at this. I really would, because I just think it's a joke at this point. And, um, you know, Paul, you know, if you want to talk about so vaccination, Jay, step, go ahead. So, so my bad. So let me, let me, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you right. So <clears throat> are you saying you think now we're at a time now where like, even if you're positive, if you're not sick, if you're not showing no symptoms, we should still be going head steam. Don't worry about it. We good. If Paul, if Paul George is not showing symptoms, I would play him. I think he should play. And if you, you're talking about vaccinated, unvaccinated, at this point, I don't think it really matters to me. But we know based on like how stringent the NBA was, there's very few players that haven't been vaccinated. And if you haven't taken a vaccine, you're fine with the risk. And for the, we, and we, we've been over this thing so many times. We know who's at risk. The NBA player is not at risk unless you got an underlying condition. But these guys are some of, you know, the elite of the elite as far as the athletes. Right. And I think I, I don't think the risk is, is for them. Just like when we talk, when we see like what's going on with some of these schools and some of these cities still. Why are some of these kids wearing masks? It's just ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on, because if he don't if he plays or don't play the Clippers, most likely would be uh, getting escorted on out of the playoffs in the first round by Phoenix. So it's not that big a deal, but for one game to decide it all, your best player ain't, we ain't seen him all year with whatever injury he's been right. dealing with. And then your right, second right. best player has been in and out 
you know, not to be confused with a fast food joint. And, you know, <laughs> maybe <laughs> want like, a burger right now <laughs> in a game, in a game that means everything to like going home or going, having a chance to make a run at the eight seed. You, you're not going to have your best player. I think, I think Los Angeles could still have a chance tonight um, because they just, I mean, they still got a lot of veterans that can step up. Re- Reggie Jackson's capable of leading the team. You got Marcus Morris. You got Batum. You got a bunch of guys who can compensate. Um, and it it is the Pelicans, so who knows? You know, they 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 do have. I think McCullum and Ingram. They can ob- they can obviously do some things, and they they were very good against the Spurs, according to the box score. Because you know I didn't watch. Uh, but yeah, I. I just think if I was a if I was a Clippers fan, I would be absolutely livid at this because I just I just don't think it's something that we need to be dealing with right now. The other thing, actually, <laughs> before I get back, before I go to Bridges, I just want to say, in concert with that, the the Wednesday night games, the nine ten games, the headline players for me in the backcourt, and I think you'd agree, were Trey Young, Lamelo Ball, C.J. McCollum, and uh, Deontay Murray. Dejounte Murray. Right. Uh, yeah, three out of four of them were absolute duds. They stunk from a shooting standpoint. I got eight for 24 for Trey Young, seven for 25 for uh, LaMelo Ball. McCullum was very good, 12 for 23, 33 points. And Murray was terrible at five for 19. This is the part, this is the part, but this is part of the problem with the play in. You get lackluster, this is lackluster uh, competition. We don't need we don't need two out of every three teams to be involved. What's next? We're gonna extend this all the way out to 30. And you know, well, you know, if you finish last place in the NBA in a conference, if you win 10 consecutive games, a la Phoenix from the play in from the bubble, we'll put you at the eighth seed and like you could do, you could do something with yourself. No. This I just think that's an example of why we well, shouldn't do this. But see, what 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 about the naysayers that say, well, the reason you got to play in tournament because it, it kind of helped teams like Brooklyn, for example. Um, even though technically, if you go by the old way of things, they still would have been in the playoffs, right? But yes. Yes. what but you no know, teams like Brooklyn, I don't know that you know they're that when they're playing their best, they're an elite team, but you know, injuries out the courts, blah, blah, blah. It allowed them the chance to I don't know, I guess build some continuity, get get back on the horse, and then, you know, make things a little more evenly with the, the rest of the playoff teams in the East. If you can't get it done in 82 games, you don't <laughs> – I don't need – I don't need – it's not even a play – it's it's not even a play-in tournament. These teams get two games at the most. The Nets got one game and they're in. Oh, man, they really had to have that 83rd game to get it together. No, nah, man, not <laughs> buying it. Sorry. The other th- But the other thing was, was Miles Bridges. Now, I didn't. I now we got to wait a minute. This was Wednesday, so no, it wasn't Tuesday. So yeah, I had it on at the start, and it it, it seemed pretty clear. It wasn't that long that I was like, okay, Atlanta's got this. And then they they had a really great third yeah. quarter. I thought DeAndre Hunter was really good in that third quarter, and the game was out of hand. And then I had it muted in the fourth quarter, and I just happened to look over, and I see the whole sequence live with Miles Bridges where he gets called for goaltending. They down by 31 at this point, by the way. So he get called for goaltending. He act like he want to do something to the official. He going over there looking like, you know, the official just called his mama the worst name in the world. And then the referee ain't got time for it. He's like, oh, okay, there's your one check. I'm, I'm done. I'm keep done coming with you. And keep talking. Oh, there's your second one. Okay, get him out of here. He's leaving the floor. And before he gets to the tunnel, and there was a fan, like, there, there was a fan up there, like, gesturing and everything. But I went right. back and watched it, and the fan that I'm talking about, I don't, I don't remember what he was wearing or whatever. But when I watched it, he was, like, it's like he was gesturing at the big board or something. He wasn't even looking at Bridges. And then Miles Bridges, I don't know if he was, he heard something from him or somebody else, but he turns around and, like, slaps at the dude. And then I didn't even notice the mouthpiece. He chucks his mouthpiece. I found out the next day it hit somebody, and it's just, what a circus. And Trey, hit, what you said, a 16 year old girl, right? 16 year old girl. Like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully, she was not harmed in any way. I just, you know, I say that kind of jokingly, but I mean, it, it is somewhat serious. 
Right. You, because what you said, I think is absolutely correct. We've been, we've, we've covered quite a few instances where fans have just been acting all kind of crazy. And we kind of was trying to figure out like, what is it just because everybody's been kind of cooped up for so long and you're trying to everybody right. getting back out and they just don't know, they forgot how to handle themselves. Right. Great. We, we, we have to point out these players because the players will cry the whole game, just treat the officials like dog crap. And quite honestly, they, these guys don't deserve it. I could not be an M NBA official with the right. kind of abuse they have to deal with. And, but we, but up to a point, we know that that's just how the league is. But Miles Bridges, absolutely, he deserved, he deserved to get thrown out the game for what he, you know, what he appeared, he wanted to do something. And I just didn't understand it. Like, I get it. It's frustrating. You're about to, you're about to, that's about to be your last game of the season. You didn't play that well. But at the same time, the game's over. That one call had nothing to do with the outcome of the game. Nothing and whatsoever. I don't even, I don't think it was the wrong call. And yet, what are you upset about? I mean, I just, and then to, to just continue that on your way to the tunnel and you over here slapping at people and throwing stuff like th that's embarrassing. Just an absolute, and Bonds Bridges had a really good season. Average, I think he, his scoring average went up like seven, eight points. Could be a, a sneaky candidate for the most improved player, you know, that type right. of thing. But All this right. is this is the last time this is our lasting impression of Miles Bridges. Because I ain't seen Charlotte play one game this year before this. So um, <laughs> yeah. So that's not, that's not good. And you know, he got fined and he came out and said, you know, he did a everybody has their usual spiel. They like, say, Oh, I'm sorry, and I learned I accept responsibility. What's that even mean anymore? I feel like it's just words at this point. He getting a fifty thousand dollar fine. So okay, I, I lose a little bit of money, whatever. That should the way he carried himself and conducted himself and his actions, and for potentially somebody could have gotten hurt. And I th I think I, that should warrant a suspension. I was he, he should be suspended for the opening game next year, in my opinion. Anyway, I guess that, that I guess that's it. We'll move on to the actual playoffs. This show wasn't it. <laughs>